We just got back from our Thanksgiving camp trip up in uh, North Alabama, and I want to go ahead and put the, uh, the new truck hitch crane to its first official use, which is going to be removing this Honda generator off the front of the camper here. So back whenever uh, Abby and I first set this thing up there, that's when I got the idea then that it would be really handy to have one of these types of uh, hitch cranes for the truck. And although it would have been really easy to just order one, put one together and use it, I really wanted to build one out of the scraps that I have here and the cherry picker that I had and uh, just make a project out of it. So that's why I went that route. I just didn't want to buy one for this, uh, for this case right here. But this isn't an extremely heavy generator, but it is heavy and awkward for two people to get up here to this level. You can see how high this is. I mean, it's chest level for me right there. So it is a little awkward. So we're gonna use the hitch crane and see how it does. I don't have it in uh, position yet. I just got backed up. I had to get the, uh, the clamps and the uh, locks and everything off here. So it's ready to go now. I got a couple straps and we'll just hook the straps right here to the bars on both sides and I'll have to get backed up and then uh, set the foot there to support it. So let me get set up and then we'll go ahead and make a lift and get this thing off here. All right, we got Abby holding the camera. She's helping me. We've got this thing uh, stra strapped up and is ready to uh, do its first official lift. Look, look at that, there it is. Isn't that easier than having you come out here and help me pick that up? Okay, by the way, so we got the foot supported down here. And I, I just want to mention something real quick before we do this. I am going to make a modification to this so that it actually has a couple of support legs that go off of each side. I know that some of the other designs are made that way and I think, I think that needs to be done. So we are going to make some mods to this to continue to improve its functionality. Look at that. That's a little bit easier, isn't it? <laughs> a lot easier. And it's got a really nice uh, control valve here that's easy to let this thing down. That was all this right here moving around. So I got a little handy cart that I put this on. And it should, That's should it should take it all the way down. Yep, you just gotta get the cart where it needs to be. Touchdown, look at that. <laughs> That's awesome. That is why I went through countless hours of fabrication and machine work to uh, do this right here. Okay. And you see how nice that worked? Yeah, that was incredible. That worked pretty good. By the way, I did add these tubes here. I forgot to mention that. I went ahead and welded these on. These are gonna be your torque tubes for the handle. So when you wanna uh, spin it, you can just stick that in there like this and, and do just that. Matter of fact, I'm gonna go ahead and pick it back up because the, the fun didn't last long enough. <laughs> but I'll show you what I mean. And you can see this, this generator isn't all that heavy, you know? So. I think it's heavy. I'm kind of in the wrong position to do this right here. But here's, here's an example right there. Stick that in there to go and spin it. This is kind of a bad example. <laughs> do you see what I mean? Yeah, it's great. So you can take this guy and go ahead and spin it around like so. That is going to work out nice, right there. And you didn't hurt your back one time. No, I didn't hurt my back, but the only, the only issue with this whole system is that this unit right here is heavy. So this is the hardest part of, of getting this set up, is setting this down into there. And you, you can certainly... I need another crane <laughs> to put this crane up. And you can certainly reduce the weight by taking this all apart. Yeah. And I think if, if someone was using this that maybe doesn't have the ability to pick all this up at once, you would have to do it that way. You know, put it up in stages. So that is the downfall of my design is that it is, this part is real heavy right here. 
but I think it's nice and heavy duty for what we got. So that's going to work out good right there. Yeah, that's great. Whenever we go to uh, mount this up, because I want to keep this stored in the garage like I always do, uh, I'll be able to hook this crane up right here and uh, easily pick it up and mount it up here on the on the camper. I love it. Great work. Successful first lift. Yeah. I picked it back up again just to kind of swing it around here to the bed of the truck just to kind of show uh, the use of this thing, not just for a generator, but anything, you know, but if I wanted to pick this up out of the bed of the truck and set it over here on the tray or down the ground, whatever. But I am very pleased with this. I'm going to be really happy to uh, have this guy ready whenever I need to use it for something like this here. I'm going to go ahead and jump on these two bolts. These are for our truck hitch crane here. And as I had mentioned previously in the video, what I want to do is make these um, like a T-bolt, if you will, so that you can hand tighten these without having to have a wrench on you. And uh, so the plan is we're going to use this half inch diameter stainless steel bar. This is just dirty, stained. I need to clean that. And we'll take this piece here and cut it in half. We're also going to machine some radiuses on the ends of these, make them look real nice. And we will face these two bolts off in the lathe, just, just clean them up. And then we're gonna to go to the Kearney and Trekker mill and we're gonna use this half inch wide radius milling cutter. And we'll get this set up on a, on a stub arbor and we will mount the bolts into a uh, 5C collet block. And I just wanna mill a little channel across the uh, end face of the bolt right there so that our half inch bar will fit down in there nice and look good. And then we'll just go to the welder and just put a couple little stitch welds on both sides. So this isn't necessary. This is something that you have to do, but it is a process that I'm going to do to kind of make it look nice and, and make sure everything fits together um, properly the, the way I want to. So we'll go ahead and uh, go down to the Kearney and Trekker. I'll get this guy set up. And then once we're ready to go, I'll bring you back and we'll go ahead and start making our cuts across there. We'll go ahead and get our two bolts uh, faced off. I am just going to clamp these right here in the six jaw. 
I'm not going to put enough pressure on there. And with the six equal jaws with the nice flat there, it's not going to squeeze those threads to where they're uh, out of uniform shape. It just takes a little bit. That's it. Just like that. All I want to do is just clean the face up, make it look nice. And that certainly looks nice right there. That's all I was looking at doing. Oh yeah. Go ahead and do one more. Time to go set up in the mill now. All right, this is our setup here. We're using our 5C collet block. And what I did to get the cutter absolutely center of this block right here, which is what we want, I just took a piece of paper right here, and this is approximately two, three thousandths thick, and laid it right here on top of the block and brought the table up with the, with the cutter rotating very, very gently until it started binding up on the paper right there. Okay, and then that'll put you very, very close to that edge. Take the width of the block, which was 1.730, uh, divide it by two. Take the width of the cutter, which is a half inch, so 0.5, divide that by two. So half of this and half of this, add that together, is 1.115, and then uh, bring the table up that much, and we're dead in the center of that collet block right there. Very, just a very simple way to do something like this that's not... I mean, that's, that's center, but, you know, even if it's a couple thousandths off, it ain't going to hurt anything whatsoever. So we're going to go ahead and um, get our bolts tightened up here. And the way that I have to tighten this, I'm going to have to loosen the vise. And what I'll do is just, I'll just slide it down here to this side of the vise to do our tightening and show you how to do that. So I'm just going to take this little level here. And what, what I want to do, I want my channel to go from one point to the other across the center kind of make it look symmetrical so i'm just going to simply level one of the flats of the bolt right here and this this can be a little finicky to deal with right here trying to tighten up a bolt in a collet and keep everything from moving i've already got that hand tight right there i'm going to use a pin spanner all right, so that stayed pretty level right there. Go ahead and give it another pull. Make sure it's nice and tight, just like that. And that should be good to go. And then we'll, we'll just move our collet block to this end of the vise. And we'll just, since there's only two pieces, we'll just touch the end of the bolt and make our cut. All right, we got the machine ready to go. So we're gonna touch our face. I'm gonna take a depth of 3 16 of an inch. We're gonna try that in one pass. Hopefully everything's gonna go good and uh, not have any uh, catastrophes here. I am running 50 surface feet per minute, so the RPMs are actually set at 65. That's a uh, three inch diameter cutter and we're cutting stainless, so I've got it kind of, kind of low. Usually you can come up and feel these cutters touch. This isn't a critical depth, so we're not worried about taking a little extra here. There we go. All right, we're gonna reach up here on the readout and zero that x-axis. We're gonna move it down 187. All right, we're gonna go ahead and use our uh, cool mist right here. We'll go ahead and start our first cut. We're gonna start off kind of light, one inch a minute on our feed. And here we go.
Sounded like it worked pretty good. I'm gonna move the table down. Bring it back to us, see how it looks. Turn our no-go off. That seems good, let me grab the bar. Oh yeah, that's gonna be good. The little burr is trying to push back up on this side, so we've got to deburr it. But I think that's gonna fit in there just like it's supposed to right there. Very nice. So that cut went good. I think it did pretty good. 3 16 depth, one inch a minute. So we'll go ahead and uh, swap this out for our next bolt and uh, finish that out. All right, both of our cuts look good, nice and symmetrical. We do have a heavy burr there, so we're going to just use the belt sander and the, uh, the uh, deburring wheel over on the bow door and uh, soften that up and just clean the surface up. We're gonna go ahead and machine the radius on the end of the half inch rods here. So I'm using a quarter inch corner rounding end mill. It works beautiful for uh, doing these types of ops in the lathe. And I am using some Molly D cutting oil here. That works really good for stainless. And this is some um, <clears throat> stinking stuff right there. I don't like it getting on my skin because it really just leaves that smell on you for a while. So gloves for me, we're going to run it in low. We'll just, it'd be kind of hard to see it cut. You got to, you got to keep this stainless wet with, with the uh, cutting fluid when you're doing this, you don't want to run it dry. So I'm just going to keep it applied just like this right here. This is where these acid brushes work really good because you can just kind of keep the, the surface that's cutting wet with the cutting oil. Try to keep it underneath there and keep it cutting instead of letting it rub. And then 
back off. And it looks like it's doing pretty good. Put a little on the flute there. Come in and hopefully kind of clean this up a little bit like that. And that looks pretty good right there. Yeah, it looks great. Nothing wrong with that right there. So all we'll do is just take that and um, hit it with some Scotch-Brite to kind of give it some polish. And uh, <laughs> that'll be ready to go. So I'm going to use a different camera, pull you in for a tighter shot for the next couple of cuts there. We got both of our rods machined, and you can see we've got one polished there, and one is not. So I'll just show you my little trick to quick polish with this. Just going to use some gray Scotch Brite. That's all it takes. That'll be clean enough to weld. We got our two nicely machined and polished stainless steel handles right there. Got such a nice fit there. That's going to work out great. So we'll get the TIG welder set up. I'm going to I'm going to test it out on some other another workpiece. That way I can get the heat range set right where I want. And then we'll come in here and we'll just put a stitch uh, on both sides of the rod right there. And I think that'll hopefully that'll look pretty good in the end. And then this will allow us to be able to quickly just hand tighten these things, but I can still stick a wrench on this and be able to uh, use a wrench to tighten it up if I need to. So there we go. We'll uh, meet you over at the welding machine. All right, so we're set up on the AC welding position in here. We're gonna get our, our welding done. Both pieces are very clean. And I got this little setup here with a, uh, I'm gonna use a hammer just to kind of uh, put some weight on it to hold it. Hopefully we'll get one side tacked and I'll rotate it around and then weld the other side. So just equally spacing it with a scale here, eyeballing scaling it to an uh, inch and a quarter on both sides. That'll work right there. And then 
so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take this copper hammer here and lay it right on top. That should provide some weight to keep it from trying to lift whenever I go to tack it. That's the idea anyway. Center. So that little crude setup should work. <laughs> All right, we're ready to weld. I'm going to use the uh, Everlast. And I think I've got everything preset. I used a piece of scrap stainless and tried to get the heat set right. So I think we're ready to go. Let's see if we can get a tack on this side here. Too bad. I think I need to go a little hotter on it. It is kind of a, some uh, thick material that was cold. Let's go ahead and go to the other side. better there. So once I get to the last well, I'll have to perfect it. <laughs> Alright, we're on uh, number two here, so we're going to repeat it, tack it, weld the other side, and then finish it out.
So here's our finished up T-bolts, stainless steel T-bolts there. Not the finest of stainless steel welding on my part, but I think that we have a successful part that is going to get the job done. This one definitely turned out better. This is the second one right there. If I was building several of these things, I know that once I get through the first couple, I'd have my, you know, everything would be down and I, I would uh, I would make a better weld than, <laughs> than what I did. But this is still, there's nothing wrong with that. It still looks just fine and it's going to get the job done. So these are going to go in here just like this for our truck crane, truck hitch crane system here. And this is all that it's used for. So once the uh, crossbar gets slid in here, we can certainly just take and uh, all you got to do is just be able to hand tighten those things down. That's all we need. But if we need to, if you need a little more torque, maybe even to loosen it up or something, you can still put a wrench on there. We'll be using a 15 16 wrench on that and you can use that to either tighten or loosen it there as well. But that looks pretty good. And I think that the uh, stainless will be a nice uh, looking contrast against the, uh, the finish of this whenever we, whenever we do get to uh, paint this. I am considering having my buddies up there Velocity do the, uh, the powder coat on this, that same, that, uh, that silver vein color that I've done some of the other parts here in the shop, just because it looks so good and it, and it being a nice neutral color that kind of matches everything. So I'm kind of thinking about that as well. Got to consider if it's worth the investment to have that done or uh, whatnot. But anyway, so that part of the, uh, that part of the uh, hitch crane is now finished off. I still have a couple other things that I got to do to that. And I'll certainly uh, share that with you whenever we get to it.